rejoice and be glad. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank our own pastor, Jimmy Lovelace for giving us this opportunity to come before this congregation, the Mount Moriah Baptist Church family, to uh, deliver a word from the Lord. Uh, uh, Give it down to God for our first lady, uh, Sister Alice Lovelace, daughter of the Sarah President. Thank you, praise God, for our own pastor, Mary's, uh, Jenny L. Harper, our own uh, uh, first lady, Emeritus, Sister Geraldine Howard. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, praise God, my own special big brother, Pastor Jackson, uh, my own pastor, Shirley Whitfield, Amen. and our own brother, Reverend Thurman Lovelace, and to my lovely wife, Moon. I thank you, praise God, for every day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, 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 I often care of my big brother. He, he favored me. Yes, sir. When, 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 when he gave me one of the best women that I started out in, so I can't say the only one, you know, because they got sisters in you. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, so he, yes, sir. And y'all know for y'all self that the, the pastor got one of them, so anyway, he got one of the best ones, so we can't say it. We can't say just one of them in you. Yes, sir. So we thank you, praise God, on today. I don't, I don't know about this. I don't know about you, but but I know it's been a while since I've been in uh, this uh, position. Yes, sir, to come before you with the word. Yeah, and it shouldn't seem strange because the preacher goes to preach behind the pulpit, behind the yard. It don't make no in the grocery store. Yes, sir, preacher have to share the word of God. So. I don't know why it feels strange, but I thank you, praise God, for uh, my family's niece, Jennifer Harper. She has entered the place. Thank you, praise God, for her. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank God for giving her another opportunity. Yes, sir. To be in our midst, to give them the glory, to give them the praise. And to have a story to tell somebody. Amen. Everybody in the Amen. Amen. To this great congregation, my church family, my brothers and my sisters, whom I love so dearly. And I call some of them nieces, nephews. Yes, uh, these deacons, these great men of God, every time I, I watch them at it, every time I become steadfast and I move forward as watching them. Help me. So somebody is watching you. Amen. To the usher stand on the wall to the other day. Thank you, praise God for your presence. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And a great job. Keep it up. Amen. Doing a great work. Grab your Bible back quick so we can move on here. I, I, I can't say I won't be before you long. Because I'm not running nothing when it comes to the pulpit. <laughs> yes, sir. Somebody say, you're running your mouth. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for being able to say a word. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. And if you go, if you look at St. Luke, Amen. in that fourth chapter, and hurry on down to the 16th verse. He's at home and he's going to teach his mother. And most of all, he's in a direct mode. When you have it, say amen. And he came to know where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, 
to preach the deliverance to the captives and to the repairing the covering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. I want to talk to you and encourage you and invite you to figure out God's purpose for our life. Church, how would you describe your life if you could use one word? Frantic, fatigued, frustrated. Then maybe some of us would say fun, fulfilled. I wonder how many could use the word focus. Yes. Focus is the word we can apply to the life of Jesus. Yes. Jesus knew what his purpose was uh, in life on earth. Yes. Even at an early age. Uh -huh. He found out that he, he had a purpose driven life. Yes. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but I, I look at Jesus and I thank God yes. that He stayed focused. Uh, yeah. Because He He found Himself at 12 years old telling His mother and His father that He needed to be about His father. Yes. 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 Young lad. Yes. Uh -huh. Wanted to do the will of God. Amen. Church, if you study Jesus' life closely, mm -hmm. you too will discover his entire life was pointed toward the fulfillment of what God will, purpose, plan for his life on earth. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Can we say that about our lives? Don't answer that question, church. Perhaps many of you are familiar with a juggler. That's an entertainer that continues to toss objects in the air and try to keep them in the air at least one while having the others. And there was this juggler on an old TV show who loved to juggle plates on some long Family uh, poem. By spinning them one by one, his goal was to get as many plates spinning at one time as possible uh -huh. without allowing a single poem plate to fall. Yeah. After many attempts and by constantly moving from plate to plate, the performer would finally get all the plates spinning at one time. Church, can you relate to the performance show? Yeah. Got that with me? Yes, sir. The enemy been battling my voice all week. Yes, sir. Didn't have a voice one part. The performer, the performer, and some of us in here today have something in common. If not today one time or another. Yes. We try to keep a lot of things spinning. Mm -hmm. at, at, our, at one time or another. Yes. Family, marriage, social life, church, yes. school, yes. etc., curricular activities, mm -hmm. uh, sports, the list gets longer for some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just like for the juggler to keep those plates spinning at one time it's difficult. That's how some of our lives are. Even today, many of us have become involved in different activities that we lose focus 
are even now about to lose focus of what our purpose in life really is. Church, you can have the best of values. Know that you are gifted and still miss out on God's purpose for your life. Uh -huh. If you do not stay focused. Yeah. Uh -huh. So many have spent years not knowing God's purpose are not staying focused on God. Amen. On His purpose. Uh, for their life, saints, we can easily become sidetracked and find ourselves spending plate after plate, trying to keep them all spinning. Yeah. How do we get our life focused? How do we get it on track to live a purpose-driven life? How do we stay focused on our purpose, church? We, we begin by understanding our life purpose. Yeah. That's my first point. What is the life purpose? Before we can focus on our life purpose, one must understand exactly what is meant by life purpose. If the question were asked, what is your life purpose in life? If some might answer to the time, then others might say to make lots of money. <laughs> uh, while others might say to get married and have lots of children. I don't know what that is, you know. Uh. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. While all these things could be considered beauty, but they do not represent life purpose. They are just goals some have. Church, often we confuse our goal with our purpose. It's right. so very important that we understand that our goals are not the same as our purpose in life. The purpose of our life uh, may and should help shape our goals. Our purpose will also clarify our goals in life. We as the body of Christ often wear many of hats as we face uh, life each day of our life's journey. Church, each season of our lives calls for us to take on new roles. We are children, then parents, then partners, and grandparents. We perform on one stage after another, each time we are finding our role as we go. Uh, the roles are part of our paper, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, you will... Uh, you will find out that our career roles are part of our God purpose, our God's purpose for us. Uh, too often uh, we get our life purpose mixed up with our career, uh, believing one can work without the other. Uh, the other church, that's not what that's not how it works. For the saints, for the saints, y'all don't work like that. Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever we do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. That's right. Our life purpose includes our career, but we must realize that our purpose in life is much greater than our career. That's right. We can That's right. lose our job and still have a purpose for living. Right. Yeah. Church, we must caution ourselves at times because we have and can set, can get caught up in our career that we lose focus on what our purpose is for life. Uh, you and I should, uh, you and I share the same purpose in life, but this purpose will be ultimately fulfilled by you. Uh, your fulfillment of this purpose will involve your spiritual gifts and your heart your heart, your ability, your personality, yeah, and yeah. your experience. Yeah. Your fulfillment of this purpose will also will allow you to judge people who yeah. seem impossible for yeah. others to touch. Uh, the question has been asked by many and by myself also. I wanted to know, I wanted to know, what about you? That's my second point. How do I know my purpose in life? I hope you have not have 
not discovered your, have discovered your life purpose. You are thinking if you have not, obviously, understanding one's life purpose is important. Yes. I am, but if you haven't, I'm glad you have. Church, unfortunately, the most popular method of discovering God's purpose is speculation. Mm. No. Mm. In other words, it's a guess. No. A person may enroll in uh, Psychology 101 or Philosophy 202 and hope they'll profess a lecture on who they are, why they're on earth, where they come from, and where are they going. And my brothers and my sisters, discovering God's purpose for your life will not be found sitting in a classroom where the professor lectures on making America great again. In church, we, we thank God Jesus showed us the answer. It's called the Bible. Instead of speculation, I depend yeah. on someone who knows less than you do and, and I to receive. I it's direct we can receive it directly from God. The Bible tells us the answer about who are who we are and where we are and why we're here and where we're going. Paul says in Ephesians, wherefore be not uh, unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is. Amen. Today, let us explore some questions some may have as we seek to know God's purpose yeah. for our life. Yeah. Number one says, who will we be at the center? Who will be at the center of your life? That's right. The question is vital for the other to make sense. Uh, it does not matter how much you think you know or understand about God's purpose for you. Make sure he is at the center of your life. Amen. Who says, what is the primary interest of your life? I am sure some would say, Family, others money, others pleasure, uh, debts. That's none of those. <laughs> that none of those will last. Every one of these could come to an end at any time. That's right. Then you are, if you are, I place any of these at the center of our life. We could find ourselves empty at a time when we need to be full. But we have been created to have to create to have God at the center of our life. In fact, God tells us that He made us to know and to love Him and to be an object of His love. Matthew 6 and 33 says, What seek ye first? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yeah. And all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 22, 37 and 38 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, yeah. and with <clears throat> all thy soul, and with all thy uh, mind. Yeah. And this is the first and great commandment. Yeah. And then Colossians 3 and 2 says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Paul tells us in Colossians how our heart should be yeah. for Jesus. Then in Philippians 13, he expresses how our attitude has to be to work in our purpose. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering he made it conformable unto his death. Uh, the apostle is letting us know it has to be a day by day acquaintance yeah. with Jesus yeah. in such an intimate way. Yeah. We too can be more like Christ. Yeah. And that's how we can stay focused on God's purpose for Amen. our life. Yeah. Church, not only uh, who will be at the center of our life, what will be the character of our life. Uh, when we read the Bible, we should 
discover that God is far more interested in knowing who we are uh -huh. yeah. Amen. than what we do. Uh -huh. The Apostle Paul says it in Romans 8, 29, for whom he did for you, he did predestine to be conformed to his image of his son, uh -huh. and that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Yeah. The apostle is not done. He says in Philippians 2 and 5, I let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. God desire is for each of us to grow and develop the character of Christ. Uh, the character of Christ can let us can't let us forget that our lives on earth is preparation for eternity. Uh, God help us to build the, the character and attitude of Christ. We will encounter some of the same problems he experienced. All of our preparation is for an eternity spent with God. Amen. Amen. Church, the more we understand God's purpose for our lives, yes. no matter how amazing you think you are, no matter how brilliant you folks tell you you can be, The Christ-like character has the overpower of all of that. Yes. It has to rise up above anything that you can imagine in this life. Yes. The more yeah. our character looks like Jesus, yeah. then with a servant attitude, yeah. we will agree heartily with what Paul said in Ephesians 2 yeah. For we are his workmanship yes. in Christ Jesus yes. unto good works which God has ordained that we should walk in them yes. church because we are ambassador yes, 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 yes. ambassador yes. I'm in a strange land yes. but I'm a representative of yes. God I've never been there yes. never laid my eyes on it yeah. But when I live in the world of God, I can see it real clear. Yeah, clear Because John made it plain. Yeah. Yes, sir. Talking about street paper gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm an ambassador. Yeah. On this earth, yeah. I get to scream and shout about the God that I serve. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm an ambassador. Yeah. Not in bonds. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm in bonds, not to the world, but to Christ. Yeah. This world can't hold me. It can't shut me up. Yeah. Even if they even if they take my ball. Yes, sir. Oh. And they don't take my hand. I'll just wave my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they take my feet. Yeah. Yes, sir. And don't take my voice. Yeah. I'll keep screaming. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 I was yet a sinner. Yeah. I went so undone. Yeah. In the pits of adultery. Yeah. Guess what? Guess what he did? That's your job and that's your assignment. Yeah. The tell God. The tell what he done for you. Wherever you are, wherever you are, let, let the world know that God can come rescue me. You got to believe in your heart and you got to believe in your mind. I don't know about you. I don't know what you come to do. But if there has to be something in you that tells you that my life is worth more than I've been seeing lately. If you have not been seeing yourself excited about just getting up in the morning because you know you have a God on your side. If you have not been yourself excited about seeing your brothers and your sisters, being excited about coming to the house of God to pray for I don't know about you, but I am so glad that he woke me up earlier this morning, yeah. that he had it on my mind to come out to the saints of work. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad today that I have these brothers and sisters in Christ, whom I can lean on when Jesus tells me to lean on them. But sometimes I have to lean on Jesus. When the world and the weight of the world get so heavy, I have to lean and depend on Jesus. The God I serve. Uh, when I was deep, so deep in sin, yes, sir, I seen him come pull me out. And every now and then when I tried to walk back into sin, I seen the door being closed. Sin in my face. You can't go back there, son. I'm a living witness to tell you 
that if you want to be rescued and delivered from anything that's hitting you, doctrine, I don't know, alcohol, drugs, or whatever, if you really want to be delivered, you ask God. You ask God, he'll take the taste right out of your mouth. He'll take it away. Now all you have to do is cry out. Cry out. If somebody tells you to cry out, that's what you do. If somebody tells you to get in a still quiet place and pray to God and ask him, that's what you do. If you do what the prophet said, I am living witness that you will be delivered. Because Jesus Christ, he loved me so. God loved us so, y'all. I don't know about you, but he has a plan and his purpose is so great. I don't know about you, but just like Jesus, we got to stay focused. He was so focused when they puked and scorned him. Yes, sir. When they when Pilate told him, yes, sir. Yeah. He didn't have no fault in him. Pilate could have settled the whole thing. But because he had to do a job, and we got to do a job, we got to be about our father's business. Jesus was about his father's business. So whenever they marched it from judgment hall to judgment hall, whenever he found himself in a kangaroo court, yeah. In a crooked court where everything was against him. Uh -huh. He never said a mumbling word. Yeah. Yeah. When they beat him with a cat of nine tails, yeah. he never said a mumbling word. Yeah. I don't know about you, church, but I'm so glad yeah. that I serve yeah. a God, yeah. the Son of Savior, yeah. that never said a mumbling word. Yeah. I'm so glad this morning. They had, when they marched him up the hill called Gagata. Uh -huh. I don't know about you, but I can see it in my sanctified mind. I'm so glad that he never said a mumbling word. I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad when they pierced him in the side. He never said a mumbling word. Uh -huh. When they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet, he never said a mumbling word. So glad to be in partnership uh -huh, with a God like that. I'm so glad this morning that I am a child of the Most High God. Uh -huh, like Jesus, every now and then, they go to heaven to the cross. But I'm so glad I'm learning how never to say a mummy word. Because when I begin to look more like Jesus, the world can begin to see more clearly. So I admonish you this morning, if you're not looking more like Jesus, please, sir, please, ma'am, remember that Jesus, while he was dying on the cross, he never said a the word because he knew that he had the finish, the assignment that he had. He knew his purpose was to save the world from their sins.
This life is not worth living yes, if you're not perfectly driven. Yes, know that God has a purpose yes, for your life. Yes, you're not just born to be here, entertain yourself, enjoy yourself with the, with the riches of this world. And not know that all of us are going to be. And you've got to be a God. Yes, and I want to be in peace. Yes, because I need to hear it. So well done. Yes, my bill is paid for certain. Yes, he ain't judging me by my performance. Totally. But what he's judging me is my commitment yes, to stay focused on him. Yes, so yes, church. Peace up, please, man. Yes, Set your mind on the things of God. Get your Bible and believe that every word in it is true. Amen. And when you read it, know that the Lord is talking directly to you. Oh, yeah. Please, the word that God bless you and keep it without a prayer.